What's up, my dudes? All right, before I even get started in this video, now I'm not saying I know everything about this game. That's not what I'm trying to, you know, get across. If, if this is not like a pro guide to Supercross 3, you know what I'm saying? This is just a, you know, if you just hopped in the game, these are a few little tips, a few little quick trick things that I kind of learned from playing the game for a week and a half. That's pretty much what this is right here. So a lot of you guys probably know a lot of this stuff, but some things you might not know and you might figure out. And I had a few of you guys commenting on some of my other videos wanting me to make a video like this. So, okay. First things first, when you very first get into the game, Anytime you are doing any kind of race, whether it's a time attack or a normal race or a multiplayer race, you have your like race options, quote unquote, right? And this is going to take you into the physics, rider weight, transmission, flow weight, all that kind of crap. And just a little tip here, this is separate on each individual one of the types of racing in the game. So like if you go in here on time attack, and you change, let's just say, the physics to from standard to advanced, but then you go into multiplayer, it's not going to be on advanced. Or if you go into the campaign, it's not going to be on advanced. you got to change it individually th with each one of the types of racing that you're doing. Unless they update and change that in the future, I'm not really sure, but that's the way it was. Like I had to go in there and change everything separately in my actual campaign mode from... You know, my actual time attack and normal racing, um, you know, settings here. So either way, first thing you need to do, no matter what kind of skill level you're at in this game, if it's your first time playing this game ever, I still recommend you coming in here and putting these physics on advanced. I don't really see the reason for anybody to ride on the standard physics in this game. I mean... Like, it's, it's really not that hard to ride with the advanced physics. I know they make it seem kind of scary, like, woohoo, those are advanced physics. I don't know if I can handle it, dog. That might be like a simulator. It's not at all, okay? I think you're, you're not going to be really experiencing the full effect of the game with the standard physics, and you might get bored of it, think the game's not very good, and quit playing it. So, like, you need to be playing on the advanced advanced physics basically from the very beginning in this game. I'm just telling you, no matter what kind of skill level you are, it's going to help you hit jump rhythms better. It's going to help you get around the track better. Definitely want to go advanced on the physics. Now, the joint brakes, I just, I personally go off on this. Um, you know, you can set your brakes up to different buttons. You could have this on if you wanted to, to have them both on the same button, but... Personally, I just have it off, and I, I kind of like to, like, when I'm going into a corner really quick, I like to sort of, like, slide my brake a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like where I'm on the throttle and the brake at the same time. You know, I don't like to just go into a corner really fast and then get on both of the brakes and then just, like, lock the bike up and then turn and get on the gas. I don't like to come to a stop in this game. I feel like when, when you really, like, you're dragging the brakes between the, the, you know, you got the gas and then you're going to the brake while you still got the gas on there. You're going back on the gas while you still got the brake on. It seems to carry a lot of speed in these corners on this game when you learn how to do that. So, you know, you just kind of got to figure out what you want to do there. As far as rider weight, this is another thing you want to go manual on this. Because if you don't, and this is no matter what kind of skill level you are, you still want to go manual on this because this is going to allow you to lean forward, lean back, do all that kind of stuff better, lean in the corners better. It's just better in every way. It's not really like making the bike unrideable or way too hard to, you know, ride in the game. It's like I said, it's not a simulator. So really the the standard physics and like the semi-automatic rider weight, that's really that is like super, super basic. That is like taking it back to the first Supercross games physics. Oh, damn. I hate coming through stunting on games that I know. Ah, oh, that's the worst, boy. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, dog. So, you know, you know how the first Supercross game had literally no real leaning forward and backwards, no real inertia to the bike, no real actual, you know, physics filling to the bike. Well, that's what you will get in this game if you go back to standard and then semi-automatic you'll basically just be going back to the first supercross game so what the hell is the point so you need to go advanced manual transmission this is kind of teach their own personally in arcade games i like to do the uh like the uh, automatic transmission just because i don't really i don't think really having manual transmission makes that big of a difference in an arcade game like it does a simulator i don't think it's quite as critical 
So you can really go kind of either one with this. And then I just personally turn rewind and flow aid off just because flow aid is really annoying. You can't really see where you're going. And um, you're also going to get more credits per race, if I'm not mistaken, when you have rewind and flow aid turned off. So if you're trying to get more credits, turn that shit off, boy. Okay, so let's move on to the types of bikes you need to be running in the game if you really want to, you know, have a pleasurable experience on hitting bigger lines and, you know, stuff like that, really being able to keep up with the fast boys in the game. So the main two dinos that I've been seeing right now so far in the online servers, everybody's really been playing the game hardcore. What I'm really seeing is a kind of a raging war between Honda and KTM right now as far as the 450 dinos in the game. That's what I'm seeing right now. Um, and if you go by the stats, you know, I'm already on a Honda right here. So if you go to the KTM, it says it's got better speed, better acceleration, and better handling, but just worse braking. But I don't know how much that really transitions into the game. Yeah, you can sit here and look at a little, you know, attribute stat menu all you want to. But yeah, the KTM's got a cool power feeling to it, but I... I I wouldn't go 100% off of this little stat sheet right here, you know, these little stats up here at the upper right, because there's still a shitload of people that run a Honda in this game. There is still a ton of people that say the Honda is by far the best in this game. Um, few people saying KTM's the best, but I've, I'm still seeing way more people saying the Honda's better than the KTM. And when you look at this, it's this is only saying the KTM's worse at braking and it's better at everything else, so it's got to be better, right? But that's not always the case. So you guys got to understand that because like back in Reflex, the 252 strokes, whenever you upgraded those bikes, it said that they were way faster than the 450s in those games, but they really weren't. You see what I'm saying? So there's like a, yeah, things can say that they have like better speed and acceleration, but all these bikes have a different power curve and a different like torque to horsepower style filling and ratio. So... It doesn't always necessarily translate exactly to what the stats are showing up here. That's all I'm saying. But either way, if you're wanting a decent amount of speed to be able to hit some bigger rhythms and stuff like that, you basically need to be on a KTM or a Honda. All these other bikes are okay. The Suzuki is definitely lacking in the speed category for sure. This is one of those bikes you don't want to be on if you're really trying to, you know, hit bigger jumps. It's hard enough to hit bigger jumps as a beginner anyways, so you don't want to be putting yourself at a... At a uh, you know, disadvantage having a lower powered bike. So I would just personally at this current point of the game, go with KTM or Honda. Um, that's just what I would do. The Yamaha shows to have a lot of acceleration, which it does have, but, um, overall I still think, I, I still just think the Honda is better than any other bike in the game. Cause it has a little, like a little NOS boost feeling like somewhere between the low end and mid range of the power. It gets like a little turbo NOS boost that I don't notice on the KTM. And it seems like that power hits right before you hit like a big quad in or something. So either way, so that's kind of what, what we got going on with that. Um, wow, that just like reset everything on the bike here. <laughs> okay, let me just explain a little thing right here right quick. Uh, let me see. Components, okay. Okay, so let me just explain a little something about when you start actually buying like the different, you know, better suspension, better exhaust and all that kind of stuff. This is just a little tip to some of you guys um, if you didn't know this already. And this has kind of been going on with some of the previous Milestone games as well. Like when you go in here to put an exhaust on this thing, you know, you can go down to Yoshi Mirror, right? And you got the stock exhaust right here. And then you go over to this one. And it says RS9, whatever, right? So you might think, oh, okay, I like that exhaust. I'm going to buy that one. But you don't even realize that if you go down to this one, look how much more speed and acceleration you're getting, dog. Like, they have varying... See, they have three different levels. They've got a... A uh, like barely improving this aspect to like medium improving the exhaust and then a full blown banger exhaust right here, right? And then obviously, you know, this one costs 30 grand, this one's 50 grand, this one's 65 grand. But like to the naked eye, most people would think all these just improve the same amount. So you might come in here and like come down to this one and think, oh, okay, this is just like, you know, got to be the best exhaust in the game as far as like how much speed and acceleration it gives you and you don't even realize there's a better one right here dog so just a little tip right there and that's the way with everything in the game too just uh you know letting you guys know that's the way everything is in the game 
that's the way, um, you know, that's the way that literally every exhaust in the game is like that, dog. Every single exhaust. But, uh, ooh, look how good that little, that little header pipe looks on this Pro Stereo. I think it looks sick, dog. But, uh, yeah, so just letting you guys know, that's the way it is with uh, everything. That's the way it is with, like, come in here in the suspension, go to, like, well, suspension only really has, like, one option. But let me let me see a different one here, like the rear sprocket. Uh, let me see real quick. Oh, uh, no, all of them are basically the same. Let me, let me see real quick. I think the brake disc might be, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the brake disc, right? Look at the braking down there. Whenever I go to this one over here, the flame fixed. Then I go to this flame MX, and it's even more braking, right? So just be aware of that. Just a little something. There's multi, multiple different levels of upgrades within one individual component on the bike. You know what I'm saying? So don't like, don't mess up and not you know give yourself the full amount of attributes that you can have by putting a, like a medium level exhaust or a medium level brake disc or whatever you know you, you want to make sure you're putting the full stuff on it right okay so now time for a little bit of a guide on a couple of the beginner on track things right here so first of all in the setup personally and this is one of those to each their own kind of thing right here but i like to go the short gear ratio on every single track in this game other than the motocross mx outdoor track that track i like to go medium gearing but all the supercross tracks even the normal in stadium ones and especially those super tight cramped down training test supercross tracks you definitely want to go short gear ratio dog you're not going to run out of gears on these tracks you're not going to be like you know tapping it out fifth you know fifth tapped out or anything like that unless you get on the motocross track so just another little tip making that gear ratio shorter more of a beginner you're going to be able to get more power low end power out of the corners and stuff like that so uh either way personally that's just what i like to do dog and there's another big tip right here okay this default camera in this game has, is this really zoomed in kind of you know personally i think it's a little too far zoomed in there's a lot of times where the camera's kind of shaking around it's a pretty shaky camera you can see the bottom the the back wheel of my bike kind of getting out of the camera view you know here and there whenever i start coming up short and stuff they might have fixed that with an update i'm not really sure but um personally you know if you've got that kind of weird feeling like it looks a little bit weird or you're a little too zoomed in or you know the damn camera's shaking around too much all you got to do is hit two and this is going to take you to the the other third person camera in the game this one's a little more zoomed out this one's a little more not as like shaky you can kind of see what's going on around you i mean i just i personally think this uh this number two the second third person camera right here is so much better than the default normal camera in the game and this one's not like super zoomed out you know sometimes in these arcade motocross games they'll get that second third person camera like way too zoomed out and it just looks silly this one doesn't really look like that this one's actually in a really nice place right here so um either way this track will be looking sick on that wet track mode dog that looks so cool it just looks like an overwatered practice or some shit you know that looks really really cool milestone with all them little separate individual little water pond patches and shit looks super cool so anyways as far as like on track stuff and just like standard you know there's actually inertia to this bike in this game so it's gonna take some time to kind of figure out the feeling of it and uh kind of figure out what you're doing because there's a leaning forward and backwards in this game system unlike the first supercross game so there's a real sense of like whenever you're jumping over a jump you really have to lean forward to get your front end to go down the downside of a jump phase properly and you got to lean back you got to actually there's a seat bounce hucking system to this game whenever you're trying to huck big jumps in the game and the basic way that you pretty much do that is you just lean back and then basically just lean back over the jump face i mean with both your thumbsticks that's about the easiest way to do the uh the seat bouncing in this game i've found thus far personally i kind of lean back and then a lot of times you don't even have to lean forward but sometimes whenever you're like in the transition of a rhythm jump sometimes you kind of have to lean forward to get your front end down in that that transition properly and then lean back and then lean forward again to really get the damn bike to hook up over that next jump you know what i'm saying so that's just a little bit of a tip right there 
Um, now, you know, obviously the scrubbing system, you can now turn both your thumbsticks the same direction and actually get the bike to turn over a little bit. So you can use that uh, to your advantage with certain jumps where you're trying to kind of jump through a corner and stuff like that. And there is a lot of occasions in this game where you'll do like I just did right there. You'll come up a little short on something, but it won't totally pop you off the bike. And you actually have to sort of lean to try to like fix yourself, you know, kind of how in reflex where you where they've got that system where you come really close to falling down and it pulls up that little where you can like you know it's like you turn your um thumbstick to the left or the right or whatever to like save the crash well there's kind of that sort of system in here without there really being that sort of system in here in a sense you know what i mean it doesn't like show you what to do um turning wise whenever you're about to crash in that situation but you just kind of got to know how to lean on the bike to save it so uh yeah those are a lot of the main basic beginner sort of tips right here to the game but really it's just knowing that there's a seat bounce you know hucking system to the game a, like a leaning back lean, leaning forward really quick over the jump face with both of your thumb sticks specifically to get it to do that um now as far as the cornering this is going to be uh, one of those things where you know everybody's going to have their own little technique because it really is so like skill gapped and inertia and filling on the bike you know some people they like to lean forward more some people like to just turn but you can still slide out in this game like that right there so there's a balance to it you know um some places you want to lean back some places you don't want to lean back but overall that's a lot of the main just like right out the gate certain things i could see some people kind of you know, setting up wrong or not having the manual rider weight or not having the, uh, you know, advanced physics in the game, then they're not even getting the full effect of the game. Those are a lot of the main things I just want to make sure people are setting up properly and they have set right. And I just wanted to explain, you don't really need to have that stuff on the handicap crap because this game is not hard, like super hard. I mean, yeah, it's got way more skill gap than the first two Supergrass games, but still at the end of the day, this is not like a you know, oh my god, if you're like a beginner motocross gamer, you just can't even play this game unless you have it on the handicap settings. It's not like that at all, dog. It is not like that at all. So, um, either way, that's a lot of the, you know, the main first. Now, when it comes to, like, collisions in this game and running into people, um, you know, it's a real, like, cat and mouse style thing in this game. But basically... You know, you can actually play defense in this game, and you have to sometimes. Like when somebody's running up the inside of you and you know they got that inside line, sometimes you got to play defense. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you're just going to have to kind of steer out of the way and hope they don't just wide ass open punch you all the way to another dimension and back. So, you know, that's a real smart thing when it comes to the online multiplayer racing in this game, knowing when to play defensive and knowing when to play offensive and knowing if you do play dirty and run into somebody, then they're going to, as soon as they catch right back up to you, they're going to blow your ass out of the water, you know, and, and remembering that they will do that and being able to read that, you know, being able to be like, all right, this dude's about to run up the inside, so I'm going to get on my brake super early and trick him and juke him out, and he's going to go flying in front of me because he's going to try to completely take me out. You know, there's all these cool techniques you can use like that that's really going to make a difference on that. Um... So, yeah, man, that's uh, about all the, the main basic uh, just kind of getting you going on the game type tips I can give to you here. So, hope this video helps you guys out. Like I said, DM me on Instagram. I will get you my Discord. You can come on there and hang out, play with us on Supercross 3, potentially get on my team for Supercross 3. I'm um, going to have some dudes racing in the DMR Pro Racing stuff in this game. going to try to see what that's all about. So, be a lot of fun, guys. I'm really excited. Got everything going, so I'm going to keep that ball rolling later, dudes.